this is the problem with buying a used motorhome. So I just took this bed out and right behind me, we found where there might have been a leak. It's really dry now, but it's not good. It's, uh, it's really rotten in there. So I have this mask on for any mold. Hopefully it does the trick. Uh, I'm going to explore it a little bit. It looks very centralized. Gloves might be nice. This is really not good. And it looks like it's pretty soft over here. Um, this part looks... Yeah. Ooh, this sucks. I ended up tearing that entire thin piece of plywood right out. We can just replace all of this really simply if it's just this part that's rotten. This board looks really good, except for on that side where it's definitely rotten. Unfortunately, it's all one piece. Everything was just braced onto these guys down at the bottom. And I thought they were stapled in because I felt it and I couldn't feel any screws. Turns out they were screwed in, but the screws are so rusty and these are so rotten um, that I was able to just crank on it enough to just pull them out. Uh, this is a bit of an unexpected reno, but um, there's always going to be unexpected things that happen. Um, and you just got to deal with them as quickly as you can, as smoothly as you can, and without as many, um, like, you know, if you create a problem by renoing, um, then that's one thing. So there's this simple problem. We can create a simple solution, repair it exactly how it was, and then reseal properly so that it doesn't happen again. That's what we're doing. Right. A little tiny hole right there caused most of this damage. Alright guys, we are at the final stages of this restoration here with this rotten material. Um, so what I did was I put the panels in, everything fit because I measured everything properly. This I had to cut with a jigsaw so it's a little bit off but we're just going to fill that. Obviously this all needs to be re-sanded, uh, the jigsaw kind of ripped these things apart a little bit. There's some holes here that we're just going to patch with tape and then put filler over and paint them so that you can't see. I filled all the seams with just expandable foam. This stuff can just easily be cut to make level and it adds you know, some pressure against the bottom here. So this is, um, if you lean against it or put pressure against it, it's not going to pop out or anything like that. And that's just this stuff, low expanding foam for insulation. Pretty much I just need to wait for this to fully dry, cut it, and then put a silicone seam along it and re-sand it, repaint it, and it's done. So I'll show you guys the final result. When we bought this motorhome, you're just, you're always subject to little surprises that are gonna happen. So that's something that's actually very common with these old motorhomes is uh, the shells just aren't taken care of or the seams or maybe they hit a branch or it can just be really, really simple with this thin aluminum shell that's here. And if any water gets in, uh, it's just gonna eat away at the wood because none of this wood is properly treated. Um, so what I had to do was I had to take off part of the wood here and part of the wood up front and I had to replace everything that was in there. So luckily you're just kind of taking measurements from old pieces of wood that are there and just replacing what you can. Um, some of it, it was actually adhered to the aluminum shell with adhesive glue, uh, which is most unfortunate because it seems like they're either building these and placing these in um, and then wrapping it all up. So it's, it's a lot easier to build one of these than it actually is to renovate one properly. For instance, there's supporting studs that run vertical, 
um, to a, a horizontal studs uh, right here at the window. And those are actually attached on both sides just with big staples. So you can't get at this other side of the one unless you took the aluminum right off. So I had to just use L brackets and mending plates. You could also just um, drill you know, at an angle and, and screw down so that any sort of tension, because this the whole thing is gonna shake when you're going down the highway, you want it all to be built out properly. So the way that I did that, and I'm no master carpenter by any means or restoration person at all, I'm just an amateur, but the way I did it was with mending plates, L brackets, um, screws, and a, and a little bit of he adhesive stuff, um, but I wanted to be able to, in case there was anything else that would happen, you know, this is a DIY thing, so if it was ever done improperly, um, you know, the lack of glue that I use in my build is important so that you can always change things if you want to as well. I only had access to certain types of lumber, so this board here is a quarter inch ply, and this veneer plywood here was actually a little bit thinner, so what I did to uh, just mitigate that with the rest of the reno, which is just painting it and making it look nice again, uh, was to just use wood filler. And then I found out later there's actually this poly filler that people use for um, spackling that is much better. It dries quicker, it dries better, it's much cheaper. Um, so that's what I ended up using. And I just kind of leveled it and then sanded it so that we have this angle. So it all kind of just levels out. And from the, just a quick look, you're not seeing any short 90 degree angles of the wood being different. Now I had to do that on that side as well. And then under the sill, because this board was just a little bit short, uh, I used a jigsaw to cut it, which was a sort of a big mistake because the jigsaw rips a lot whereas you know a skill saw a table saw a band saw you're just going to get a lot finer cuts and it's not going to rip up these uh, laminates in the plywood um, up front i was lucky enough that the insulation wasn't ruined that can happen as well if there's materials that um, that are rotting and getting into the insulation uh, insulation itself is inert so it's not going to break down from any of that kind of stuff but the insulation wasn't dirty or, or had rotten bits on it at all. So I re-put the insulation that was already in there, um, boarded it up, sealed everything, and now it's just sanding and painting. So I actually have a video about sanding and painting because that's the easiest aesthetically different change that you can do in a motorhome and make it look really nice again. Uh, so check out how I do that in this motorhome. Consider subscribing liking this video, sharing it with somebody else that uh, is thinking about doing this.